Hello everyone, we are here to present uh, the June Cellar Series. Uh, we're pretty excited about some new wines in the shop. Um, and it's kind of what's old is new again with, uh, with what we've got here for June. Um, it's a bit of a focus, a bit of a, um, a really tight focus with one importer. But this importer in particular has kind of uh, gem after gem after gem, which is always exciting for us to kind of revisit some favorites um, and see some new producers here as well. So. Uh, we're at about $155 before uh, or after the 20% discount. Um, and we've got two whites, uh, uh, one rosé and three reds with kind of a range of kind of weight uh, with the reds. Um, but these are set up for summer drinking, um, especially these first four wines right here. Um, and then we get a little bit of like a Northern Rhone, Southern Rhone, a uh, little combination here. Um, yeah, let's just kind of briefly talk about Kermit Lynch for a second. So. You know, we've been working uh, with Kermit, I guess I guess, probably should ask Mike uh, about this, uh, maybe even Jim and Judy uh, about this, but we've been working with uh, uh, Kermit Lynch for, for decades. Um, you know, Kermit has been importing wines into the United States since uh, the 70s. Um, it's kind of a famous uh, uh, story, you know, he kind of got a $5,000 loan and, uh, in 72 and kind of uh, really took that, um, took that money to the bank, you know, and, and uh, and kind of really did uh, pretty amazing things with it. Um, but as we kind of talk about Kermit, we're gonna jump into the wines here. So let's talk about, um, it's hot out. Um, it's gonna get really hot out really soon. Um, and we are looking at some very refreshing uh, uh, first part of this tasting. So our one token Italian wine, Kermit does do Italian wines. He does them quite well, um, but he really focuses in France, you know? And so everything from here on out is France, but we've got a token Italian white. Uh, this is Punta Crena. We've worked with Punta Crena many times in the past, but um, it's been a while since we've seen a new vintage of this wine. So this is the 2019, it just, it just showed up. Um, Punta Crena is in Liguria. And I really love Ligurian wines. I really love Ligurian food. Um, this is like a, almost to like the French border, almost like the Monaco, uh, uh, you know, French border there. So right along the coast, uh, there's this narrow little, um, uh, uh, you know, Italian state of Liguria that, is very seaside um, and this wine does exactly that so um, a grape called Pigato um, this family has been farming these vineyards for over 500 years um, it's all unfine unfiltered uh, racy uh, 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 crisp white wine that's grown on this kind of red uh, red clay limestone which is really rare in this area and wherever you see red soils you're gonna get some spice in your wines which is kind of exciting uh, I always think of like the Erzger Wurz Garden and in, in in Germany, some like the great spicy, uh, racy uh, Mosel Rieslings. This kind of does the same thing. It's bone dry, it's not like Riesling, um, um, a sweeter reason, but lovely wine. So hope you enjoy this wine right here. Uh, moving to France and staying in France, we are going to the Loire for a little trio of wines right here. So when I think of spring, um, I think of the Loire almost instantaneously. The wines uh, just have this very light on their uh, light on their feet touch to them. Um, they're very kind of nimble and precise wines uh, across the three different colors that you see here. But let's jump into uh, an appellation called Ruy. In fact, this is Domaine de Ruy. Um, and Domaine de Ruy is uh, a winery that has been uh, uh, in existence since 1935. It's a producer called Denis Jamin. I think I'm getting his name correct. Um, is the current winemaker here. He farms entirely biodynamically. And he has old vine Sauvignon Blanc that is grown on a little bit uh, different soils than you'll see in the very, very, uh, you know, uh, maybe more famous Appalachian of Sancerre, which is right around the bend, seemingly. Um, he has soils that are kind of like Chablis-like, which is really exciting. So there's uh, fossilized uh, uh, shells found all throughout his vineyards um, and makes really lovely expressions of Sauvignon Blanc. So if you like that Sancerre style and I feel like I know you do since uh, we sell a lot of Sancerre. This is kind of like a new opportunity to try um, uh, something in that vein, something in that style. So uh, Domaine de Ruy 2019 uh, uh, Sauvignon Blanc here. So we are staying very close uh, to Ruy and Sancerre um, and going to uh, an appellation called Cheverny. And this is a producer called Domaine de Salvard. And Domaine de Salvard makes a rosé from Gamay and Pinot Noir. Um, we tasted this wine about a month ago and it was super exciting for me. Um, 
I had tasted with the importer kind of later in the day and the bottle was you know about here when uh, when I had my glass poured from it and that was kind of interesting because I tasted this wine again and when we pulled the cork right away it was really cold and the wine was super tense and I've said racy like four times now but very racy you know so lots of acidity in the Loire and so as I drank this wine over the course of uh, the next couple hours, I noticed that all of these like red fruit components um, and uh, kind of these other little spices that kind of came into play there. And so my advice for this wine is, um, as you open it up is, and with all rosés, like maybe not ice cold, you know? Um, and also certain rosés really are dynamic and kind of open up. So only 20 cases for the whole region of, of Kermit's region of, of Wisconsin, Minnesota, and Illinois. So it's a rarity. We grabbed five cases of it and we can't even go get any more. So uh, really fun little wine right there. So they've been farming here since 1898. A great uh, family uh, family there on chalk and sand. Staying in the neighborhood here, we are going to Sancerre, uh, but we do not have Sauvignon Blanc in our glass or in our bottle. We have Pinot Noir. So Hippolyte Reverdy um, has been farming uh, farming vines in Sancerre since the 1600s, um, but it was really after World War II that this family kind of um, really kind of brought their fruit out of the cooperative um, and kind of into their bottle uh, uh, under their own domain, uh, sending fruit, to, uh, uh, you know, wine into Paris and, and, and further afield. So it's an interesting story with Permit here that I've kind of discovered as well. So Sancerre Rouge is a rarity. You don't see very much. Um, and in uh, you know, the primary focus is, is going to be Sauvignon Blanc in this village, but Pinot Noir has always been here, and Pinot Noir kind of has its place here. So Kermit really ordered this wine. Um, uh, you know, he really loved the style that they made, and they, he just said, "Can you make it unfined? Can you make it unfiltered? And can you age it in large neutral barrels?" And that's the recipe for this wine. So. Um, it's been uh, a, a mainstay in Hippolyte Reverdy's uh, uh, stable for the last you know, 20, 30 years in this style. Um, but just a really, really lovely, think, um, you know, kind of Cote de Nuit style uh, 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 Pinot Noir from Burgundy um, in a cool vintage, you know. There's this kind of woodsy quality to it and this brambly quality to it, but on a very kind of stony mineral framework. Really, really fun stuff. So. Moving to uh, the Northern Rhone, we're going to finish up in the Northern Rhone, Southern Rhone right here. So this is Domaine Fauré. Uh, Lionel Fauré uh, is the winemaker here, um, kind of a younger winemaker. This uh, estate got their start in the late 70s, um, second generation uh, producer right here. Farms uh, relatively steep slopes, um, uh, south facing slopes along the Rhone River, um, you know, kind of granite based soils here. He doesn't like to destem all that much, and so there is some stem inclusion right here. Um, what that means is the winemaker has the opportunity to um, destem the fruit uh, before it goes into the fermenter. And if you don't destem and you don't have really good fruit, things get really kind of out of whack quickly. They become tannic, they become bitter. Um, but if you have ripe fruit and you've got good fruit, that stem inclusion really is a difference maker. Awesome stuff here. So 100% Syrah, um, aged in neutral barrel, large, uh, large barrel. Very traditional. Um, this is from 2015, a very balanced but generous vintage. I had this bottle opened up for over two days this week and it was spectacular. So um, it really opens up uh, uh, in a really beautiful way. So um, a lovely wine from the San Josef. So. Finishing up uh, in the Southern Rhone right here, this is uh, Domaine de Durban uh, in Baume de Venise. Baume de Venise is near Gigondas, near Vaqueras, um, kind of across the valley from uh, chateauneuf du Pape. Um, this is pretty high up on a plateau overlooking um, kind of the, the great plain of the Vaucluse. Um, it was a former Roman spa site. That's uh, a really unique historical site there, um, but they've been growing uh, grapes here for thousands of years. You know, Pliny the Elder um, uh, even mentions the white wines from uh, you know from this this village. They've been making wines here for a long time. Um, this estate has been uh, in uh, in existence since 1967. Um, this is all destemmed. It's uh, it's aged in barrique, so in barrel, kind of just like this. Um, and the resulting wines are not as like chiseled and focused here, but they're warmer, spicier, and more generous. It's like really, really like 
the transition from the Northern Rhone to the Southern Rhone is extreme um, in, in many ways, uh, but this is one of the great kind of landing pads in wine. Grenache and Syrah, mostly Grenache, um, just a generous, really pretty uh, Southern French wine. Um, that's Hermit kind of in a nutshell in a lot of ways, and um, we're excited about these wines, really, really excited about these wines to kind of kick off summer. Um, you can find them this weekend, uh, starting tomorrow afternoon. Um, always feel free to give us a call at the shop, direct message us on our social media sites, or respond to this email um, or, or this uh, social media campaign. So once again, enjoy the summer. Uh, let's get after it uh, with six new wines.